So, okay. The full story for those of you that aren't familiar is a month and a half ago, basically five weeks ago, I drove the car from a parking lot to another parking lot about a block away in some rain. Drove what it through. What were you thinking? I don't know. Drove it through th- probably like three or four inches of rainwater, maybe five. I don't know. But, you know, not like flooded, just like rainwater, not even above the curb. I could still see the curb. Um, the next morning, woke up. The car was totally dead. Um, got it towed using the Tesla service app while I went to go to the launch. By the time I was done with the launch, Tesla had picked up the car, delivered it from Cocoa Beach to Orlando. Um, and then I got a loaner car for about two weeks. They said the car was done. Got the car, got to, went to go pick the car up because I was originally going to drive home for that funeral that I was, um, had to attend two weeks ago now. And uh, when I get there to pick up the car, they're like, actually, the GPS isn't working. And your backup cameras, stuff is just weird. And you can't get it to like reboot. And then all of a sudden, like, I'm sitting there in the waiting room. They're like, and actually, we can't even get it to drive now. I'm like, guys, I'm about to drive 1,400 miles home. Can you please make sure this works? Like, You're like, how about that one? See, that one looks fine. Give me that one. <laughs> well, and that's the thing is I couldn't leave the state with a rental car, nor would I really want to, because if I had to return it back, right. that'd be four days of driving that would negate me. Like, No, you know. no, no. Throw that yeah, thing so. on Starship. Send it back. <laughs> so that's what I said. I was like, guys, I'm, what if I fly one way home? can you deliver my car to me when it's done? And they're like, nope. I'm like, really? Like, think about these circumstances for me. You're going to ask me to fly around trip now to come back to get my car. And they're still like, nope, sorry, we can't, we don't have transport. I'm like, what do you mean you don't have transport? Of course you have transport options. Like, put the <laughs> car on a flatbed. $40,000 in Uber credits. <laughs> <laughs> well, they did give me, luckily, while I was gone, they did give me $100 a day in Uber credits, which helped, but still not, I only used... $80 of it or it something. It doesn't get you, know? you from Iowa to Orlando, though. <laughs> <laughs> no. So I flew home, uh, attended the funeral, flew back down to Orlando to get my car. And here's the thing. I actually brought my parents down with me because they were helping me try to look for places to, to relocate the majority of my stuff. And so we go, we've landed at like 10 p.m. And they told me they'd have the car out and ready to go, you know, and they did. So we get to the Tesla Center at like 1130 or something and go pick it up get it up on the highway and all of a sudden boop, 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 wouldn't go above 60 miles an hour. And I'm just like, are you kidding me? <laughs> and at that and point, you have a, at this point you have a new battery pack, brand new battery pack wow. and a hardware three full self-driving chip. And I'm just like, no way. What? Do, and here I'm like, I'm really disappointed. Cause you know, my parents are looking at buying a Tesla <laughs> and Not here anymore. we are just like in service hell basically. And so we limped it out to Cocoa Beach where we were staying at 60 mile an hour only. Luckily in the morning, so I'm texting, trying to get a hold of someone at Tesla. Nothing, of course. And in the morning, like, I'm like, guys, what do I do? Like, we'll bring it back. I'm like, that's an hour and a half away from where I am. And like, I'm only out here for one more day. I'm trying to get home. Can you come pick it up? They're like, no. So it was just like the biggest nightmare. So eventually, so the car in the morning was fine because I think it was just an air bubble in the coolant system. You know, and sometimes those need to settle out when you've hmm. totally flush a coolant system, you know, you run the pumps and everything. And sometimes a bubble can get stuck at like a low point. Um, and that's, <laughs> I think what happened. They, I took it back anyway. They still purged the coolant system and they topped it off, made sure it was good to go. And it was good to go. So then I finally get to driving it home and I could not exceed 240 miles of range. Hmm. Even in like, I know Ben, you say that that's like your normal thing because you have those big rims and stuff. But well, two forty is pretty low. I would 240 say two forty is so really. I mean, I was getting over three hundred on my way down. Yeah, and in you have similar the weather aero conditions. Rims? I have the aero rims. Yeah, you should. I mean, be I've gotten better. like I've gotten over three hundred miles on a single charge before. And yeah, I, was only, I mean, like, I would say if you were driving eighty-five miles an hour in the wind. Yeah, 240 would be expected. In fact, when I did my second test where I drove till it died, I think we got right around 240, 242 or something. But but literally, but your, you got, there was a point I got out of the car and hour? it was 40 mile per hour sustained winds. And you're right. like, oh yeah, that, that'll <laughs> right. do that. But what was your watt hour per mile during that trip? Like well over uh, 300, right? Yeah, well over 300. <laughs> like I mean, 330, my 340. average is high though. And my, so I did learn this because I, I, I mean, I think we've talked about it before. I'm like, dude, that's crazy. No, like my average is this. It didn't really dawn on me how big of a difference it made, but I have those super high performance rims. Yeah. I'm sorry, and not rims, sticky but tires. Tires, yeah. Yeah. So the tires are extremely grippy. They're like the grippiest yeah. tires you can buy. Right. And that 
has of course a it has big impact. A so, lot of rolling resistance. They're made to stick to the to the road. Yeah. So what yeah. is your like? What's your like average watt hour per mile? Three eleven. Okay. Yeah. Mine's like two seventy. Yeah. I think. Well, see. I'm and so about, on this. So well, on this trip, I was I was at two seventy four for an entire thing, and I was at like seven percent at two hundred like thirty eight miles or something. Hmm. Way below rating. Way below even like when you factor in the actual watt hour per mile. Yeah. Like that's still like 8% off or something. And, and the weather wasn't insane or anything, right? No, I like mean the weather mild. should be factored into the watt hour per mile. When weather's bad, your watt hour per mile gets worse well, too. It'll go up. Right, exactly. Yeah. So like it should be factored in. If you have a headwind, you know, your car will be showing you that it's having to exert more energy. Therefore, yeah, your watt yeah, hour yeah. per mile will go up. So at 274, we know how much the car was consuming. Oh, got it. So you're saying that the watt hour per mile was like normal It was normal. I should have and got high yeah. 200s, no problem. And when you charged it fully, it got all the way up to 300. It was saying that you had 300 miles or it would just it will charge say, up to... It, yep, it'll say I have 300 miles of range Right. Okay. when I charge it to 100%. And the car's supposed to have 315. Wow. So right there is a problem because it's brand new battery pack. And then beyond that, it still won't even get close to 300. Still. Hmm. So we had, at one point, we had a, a gap that was 100 and, uh, 170 miles was all or something between superchargers, which isn't it, a lot. You know, it's like in between well, S- Springfield, Illinois and, so- and Davenport, Iowa, we couldn't make it. We had to stop at a destination charger and oh, add wow. like 10 miles, 20 miles to it just to make sure we could get there safely. Was Jeez. there, now there's a spot, so I drive to basically to Phoenix and back is my longest trip I typically do, and... There's Yuma, which is right in between here and there. And that, I think, if you like, could fly there, is around 170, 180 miles. But there's a mountain range between here and there. That So you mm. eat up a good... Like, when I, I had my original Model S, I had 200 miles of range. My first trip to Phoenix, I'm like, sure, 170 miles, I got plenty. Nope, not a chance. Mm. <laughs> like, not even close. And mm-hmm. I learned later that, at least in a Model S, it takes... The, it has to say 240 or 250 miles of range rated range to make it there even though it's only 170 miles so right um but this one doesn't sound like midwest it's pretty flat right uh very i mean like yeah there's only one spot on my way home and like on the border of basically georgia and tennessee where it's hilly but still you know i mean yeah yeah the condition like so now i'm waiting i do finally have uh, so after all of this when i finally got home basically and i and by the way on the way home i'm trying to call the service center I called that service center. I called one in Nashville. I called one in Minneapolis. Constantly, I'm using the app to try to get a hold of someone. I could not get a hold of anyone. And I'm like sitting here, we're struggling to get, it took us three days to get home instead of two. Wow. So not only had I spent two weeks of extra hotels, I had to fly round trip. And then it took me three days to get home instead of two. So like, this was just a nightmare. And I wasn't even able to get a hold of a single person on the, like anything to really be able to figure it out. So when you triple yeah. the amount of cars on the road in the last year and you don't triple your service centers that are already behind, like, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Well, There's going to be some problems. You know, I don't know if anyone's done that. But, um, I've looked at data about behind superchargers and the growth of that. And it, despite what some maybe more hardcore Tesla fan channels may tell you, it has <laughs> slowed dramatically. Um I also don't think we need, you know, 800 supercharger stations in LA alone. I think that, you know, they're more important in the travel uh, sector, in the, you know, where you're actually driving and need them. So, but mm-hmm. yes, yeah, I, I haven't seen any data around service centers. I know here in, in my neck of the woods, uh, we had one uh, a year ago, and now we have three. So, mm. you know, they've, they've done a, a tremendous amount um, here, but also this is Southern California where it's like a huge concentration right. of them. So. So where is the car now? So what yeah, is the what, current... What, has this been resolved at all? So the car is with me. I have a personal guy that's going to be following up with me in a week after he sees the data of the car. Of course, it's not being driven right now, though, so I don't know how much it'll tell him. Just, like, go drive it around. <laughs> I, I probably will have to at some point just to just to put some miles on it to see, like, what the update is. Um, and they're going to hopefully let me know, like, what's going on. Um, Dude, the other thing point, I should say about superchargers, car. though, is that the superchargers are, from what I'm seeing my entire route they are like increasing rapidly which is great like there's been a lot of construction a lot of new permits taken out um especially in these holes that i'm like i gotta get like for instance peoria um hannibal missouri 
uh, Council Bluffs, Iowa, some of these like, you know, or Mount Pleasant, I think, like some of these smaller areas where I'm like, that's a huge 200 plus mile gap. You know, I'd love to be able to fill that in and they're filling those in as we speak. And they're adding a ton yeah, of V3s. Yeah, I think that's where it should be. I think that's where the investment needs to go, really. Yeah. Like people in LA will be upset about it because there's not one, you know, on every corner. Right. Um, and you're like, there's still 13 in LA. Okay, get over it. I, I think <laughs> like, LA should be, people need to, around populated urban areas, we need to be focusing more on destination chargers so that people yeah. can charge. Yeah, the, at the home thing that sucks work. about those though is they're always at businesses that don't let you just use them. You know? Well, I, I'm it saying like, be, I think like workers, you know, employees and stuff like that need to be putting in more and sure. and apartment complexes need to be putting in more. Then supercharger needs won't be nearly as high because people will have plenty of range for their day every day. Yeah, and, and there's a lot of uh, local kind of ordinances and legislation going in place. I know in San Diego, we, we made that uh, what last year or so. And I think maybe all over the state, like if you're a new apartment building, you have to put in X number of them. And in fact, I think it was in 2016, we passed a law here in California that if you... Uh, like if you're trying to get one, let's say you are living in an apartment and you're and you're saying calling them up saying, hey, I want to install one. Um, they cannot deny you uh, like like they can say, look, you need to pay for it. But beyond that, mm. they're not allowed to say no. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So it's illegal basically for them to deny it on any uh, like without some like, hey, we would have to upgrade the transformer in the building. And that would cost us three million dollars. Right. So if you've got $3 million, let's do this. But right. I mean, so like, obviously, you know, there's a lot of older buildings and stuff and things that just, just it won't work. So outside of that, it, you should be able to get one installed, um, but there may be a cost associated with right. it, so. Well, that's cool. Yeah, I, like I said though, I think supercharging in, in dense urban areas, like at this point, it's probably like, let's stop focusing on that, like, and then work on destination charges like that. And then these road trip yeah. areas are filling in very quickly from what I can tell. I think by the end of the year, like my road tripping ability will will be so much easier than it was, you know, all of last year. Yeah. So and and they're on. Well, I mean, it's still very early in the year, but uh, but yeah, last year was the lowest uh, amount mm -hmm. of new superchargers in the past three years. Yeah. Uh, by like, and it was down by like seventy percent. So it's actually fallen a lot. Right. But I don't know if that's because they're switching to V three or if they're just, you know, you've hit a point where you don't need to build as many. You know, you can have six at a gas station in the middle of nowhere. You don't necessarily need 50 there, right? Right. So, so I don't know. So, you know, there has to be some strategy there and all that. Uh, honestly, though, I think the money should be going into the service uh, side more right. than anything right now. Yep. So there you go. Hopefully by the end of the week, I'll have someone else following up and hopefully soon my car will be totally back to normal. But yeah, it was a saga. Hey, thanks for checking us out, guys. I hope you enjoyed this clip from our podcast. We do a weekly show here on YouTube, so make sure to subscribe to Our Ludicrous Future, where we discuss all the things that are going to make our future totally ludicrous. You can join us here on YouTube or at any of your favorite podcast places. Plus, if you want to get some behind-the-scenes stuff and join a cool community, you can help support the channel at patreon.com. Thanks a lot. Thanks, guys.